Chapter 8, Quantities in Chemical Reactions. I uh, skipped the first section because, I don't know, we don't need to talk about that. I don't even remember what's in 8.1, but you can read about it. Making pancakes. Um, so we're talking about relationships uh, between um, ingredients, between reactants and products in this chapter. And so um, it can be helpful to think about these things in terms of something that we understand first, which would be uh, cooking is a good, good illustration. And this ties into what we learned in Chapter 7 about chemical reactions. So the numerical relationship between chemical uh, quantities in the balanced chemical equation is called reaction stoichiometry. So there's a nice big word for you, stoichiometry. We can predict the amounts of products that form in a chemical re reaction based on the amounts of the reactants. Just like if you're cooking, you can anticipate how many cookies you could possibly make if you know how much flour and sugar and everything else you have, right? And, and these sorts of calculations are really important to chemistry. This is, this chapter eight, this is a big deal. So let's look at making pancakes. Um, and by the way, I don't recommend using this as a recipe at home because they've simplified it and left some stuff out, right? So in this recipe, we're gonna use one cup of flour and two eggs and half a teaspoon of baking powder. And you cook those up and you get five pancakes. The recipe gives us numerical relationships between how much of the ingredients we need and how much of the product we're going to get. And so we can actually write this out so that it looks like a chemical equation. One cup of flour plus two eggs plus half a teaspoon of baking powder yields five pancakes. Everybody okay with that? And, you know, talking about food, since I forgot to eat lunch, I'm going to get really, really hungry. So let's think about it. If we have two eggs and plenty of everything else, that means we could make five pancakes, right? Because usually when you're baking, you don't, or cooking, they're slightly different, aren't they? Usually when you're cooking, you don't use up all the ingredients that you have, right? Maybe you use up one, that happens a lot. You run out of eggs and so you have to stop making pancakes, right? But you usually have varying amounts. If you're making pancakes, you're not gonna run out of flour and eggs and baking powder at the same time. And this happens in, in chemistry as well. But when we look at this um, recipe, we see we need two eggs to make five pancakes. This can be a ratio. So two eggs to five pancakes. If we want five pancakes, we need two eggs. If we use two eggs, we get five pancakes. What if we had eight eggs and plenty of everything else? How many pancakes? Well, the picture's showing us 20, right? Well, let's think about how we could maybe uh, work that out. If we have eight eggs, um, what we're going to find is that this chapter, dimensional analysis, comes in very handy. What was the ratio from the recipe? Two eggs to five pancakes. So what we want to do, we can treat these as units, and we can put these words in here, and we want to divide by eggs so that we get those to go away and we're multiplying by pancakes. And it was five pancakes for every two eggs. And so we get eight times five is 40 divided by two, gives us 20 pancakes. We can do some of these in our heads when it's something that we understand. We can think about, you can visualize cracking the eggs and making the pancakes. And I use two eggs and I'm gonna get five pancakes. And if I use four eggs, I'm gonna get 10. And you can do it different ways in your head. And that works great when you can think about it. But we're gonna do this with things like moles of hydrogen and grams of sodium chloride. And it becomes harder to think about it in that same way. 
and that's where learning to do dimensional analysis so that we can have the units tell us what to do becomes just a really good idea. It's a really good idea.